the RAP test. Details for the RAP test can be found in ASTM A370, Section A4.7. Wrapping tests are sometimes used as a means for assessing the ductility of certain kinds of wire and assessing the adherence of coating on wire. The test consists of coiling the wire in a close spaced helix tightly wound against a mandrel of a specific diameter for a required number of turns. First, the operator uses the mounted bender to prepare the sample for easy insertion into the wrap tester. The tooling block, chosen according to the test sample diameter, is mounted onto the slide carriage. The quick clamps and dovetail mount assure simple and secure positioning. A support bushing, sized to the specific mandrel being used, is inserted into the tooling block to assure mandrel stability during testing. The mandrel is secured within the three-jaw chuck. The mandrel is typically sized between one and four times the diameter of the sample being tested. The drive dog is mounted onto the chuck and secured with the spring-loaded locking pin. The chuck is jogged to position the drive dog at the lowermost point to allow insertion of the wire sample. The sample wire is inserted through a guide bushing in the tooling block and into the drive dog. A locking screw in the drive dog secures the sample. Once the sample is secured, the safety guard is closed. A safety switch prevents operation until the guard is completely closed. After the operator starts the test, the rotating drive dog wraps the sample around the mandrel. The operator draws back the slide handle to control the wrap spacing. When the entire length of the sample passes through the guide bushing, the wrap test is complete. Moving the slide carriage into the safety position shuts off the operation. The operator does not need to use the stop button. The jog function can be used to position the drive dog for easiest removal of the sample. The sample can be visually inspected for cracking or other signs of failure as dictated by the customer's specification. The torsion test. ASTM A938 and ISO 7800 address the requirements for the simple torsion twist test of metallic wire. Both ends of the sample are prepared using the bender mounted on the rear of the machine. If necessary, the jog function can position the rotating chuck for insertion of the sample. The spacer is inserted behind the movable chuck so that it is positioned to disengage the stop switch. The sample is secured in the rotating chuck and the movable chuck using a hex wrench. Once the sample is secured, the spacer is removed and the safety shield is closed. The machine will not run unless the safety shield is closed. The start button initiates the test. The number of completed rotations is displayed as the test is running. For this video, a black line was drawn on the sample as shown. When the sample breaks, the counterweight pulls the movable bolt chuck so that it activates the stop switch. The sample, which may be very hot, can be removed for inspection. The torsion twist tester works with samples of varying lengths, with a minimum length of 152 millimeters or 6 inches. To set up the test for a specific sample, it is first secured in the rotating chuck. The movable chuck is moved into position and the sample is secured. The shaft collar is slid behind the movable chuck using the spacer to position it. The shaft collar is secured in place. The slide assembly 
is locked in place using the mounted clamp. Counterweights are attached to the holder as specified by requirements. Typically, 1-2% to of the wire ultimate tensile strength is used. The forward rotation is set as Program 1 or P1. The reverse rotation, Program 2 or P2, is set next. The select button allows the operator to modify settings. The button is depressed multiple times to select the correct digit. Settings are modified using the plus or minus buttons. Press enter to complete the setup. As the test runs, the indicator lights show the direction of the rotating chuck during the test. The display shows the combined number of rotations in each direction. The test is programmed using the control panel which features a two-line display with multiple screens. The total screen displays the number of revolutions completed by the rotating chuck during testing. The rate screen displays the RPM of the rotating chuck, which is controlled by a dial on the operating station controls. The count screen displays the number of counts for the first series of rotations. It also displays the RPM. The P1 screen displays the number of forward rotations programmed for the test cycle. The P2 screen displays the number of reverse rotations programmed for the cycle. The batch screen displays the number of times the test will cycle through the P1 and P2 settings. The PB reading shows the number of batches set for a particular function. A PB setting of zero will allow the tester to run through the program cycle continuously until the sample breaks. The operating station controls include start and stop buttons to control the cycle. The forward and reverse switch controls the initial direction of rotation. The variable speed control designates the RPM of the rotating chuck. The on-off switch controls the drive for setup purposes. The jog run switch enables the operator to position the rotating chuck to insert or remove the sample. Now let's review some key points from the video. 